Okay, now let's talk about something else. Let's talk about what can affect the reaction rate, how fast or slow something goes, okay? We have four factors we're going to talk about, that, about, and by varying the conditions, you can modify the rate of almost any reaction. What are these things? Okay, this is something you should write down and definitely know. Temperature, concentration, particle size, and the use of a catalyst. Those are the four main things that will change the rate of reaction. Before we start, why don't you think about it? Temperature usually does what to most reactions? Speeds it up, very good. Concentration, if something is more concentrated, then there's more of it around, so there's more chance it might collide with what it wants to react with. Particle size, if you have a big chunk of salt, it's not gonna dissolve as quickly as if you grind it all up. So particle size will also make a reaction occur more quickly. And a catalyst will learn, lowers the activation energy and speeds up the reaction. Okay, so just what I said, temperature. Usually raising the temperature speeds up a reaction, lowering it usually slows it down. Why? Okay, at higher temperatures, kinetic energy, what is, what is temperature? Let's look at an equation. Kinetic energy So kinetic energy is one half mv squared. M is mass. And V is velocity. Okay, velocity just means speed with a direction. It's a rate, okay? So one half mv squared. This is where Graham's law came from, is where Graham's law came from, um, is based on this. I think I talked to you about that. Okay, so we have one half mv squared is what kinetic energy is. So if we are increasing our temperature, then this increases. Since our mass has not changed, then basically, our velocity must change, okay? So if we increase the temperature, our velocity is changing. So it's moving more quickly, better chance of collisions, and also better chance of being able to, to uh, get over that activation energy barrier, okay? So increase in temperature, products form faster. All right, let's continue on. Concentration. Okay, so the idea here is to increase the number of par particles in a vo certain volume. Not changing the volume, you're just adding more of them together. So it's kind of like going to a party. All right, and if there's only two people that don't know each other across a crowded room, they may stay across the crowded room. But if it's filled up with people, there's a better chance of either bumping into somebody that you know or don't know or would like to know. So this is what happens when you have more things, more particles in a fixed volume. The reactants will increase their concentration and the chance of a collision is greater. Okay, The more you collide, the more chance those collisions will be effective meaning that they have enough energy and the right orientation to create a reaction. So since it will happen more often, the rate is quicker. Okay, so let's look at this. We have a splint. It's just a wooden stick that we've lit and it's basically burning, okay?
eventually it will burn out and it will just kind of glow, okay, because there's not enough oxygen for keep the fire to going. So it just glows. If we put it in a bottle filled with pure oxygen, it goes right back into flame because the amount of oxygen speeds up the combustion reaction. Because what is it? The, the wood needs oxygen to burn. If you provide it with more oxygen, then it will burn more quickly because the reaction is, can, has more concentration of oxygen. Okay, now let's look at particle size. So we can think of surface area as one thing. So if you have a container that has a very small surface, and it's a surface reaction, it's going to be much slower than something that has a big surface because it will have more particles on the surface. Okay, So think of that also from a big square cube versus a bunch of little cubes that add up to the same size as the big cube. The ones with the small cubes are going to react faster. So the smaller the particle size, the greater the surface area for a given mass of particles. That's what I'm trying to say. The result of an increased surface area will then, the chance of that colliding with something will be greater because then you have all these different surfaces that could interact with something. So a lot of times, the best example that you probably know, even though this is more solubility than it is changing the reaction, is just dissolving, you put a big chunk of solid in a container and it just sits there for a while. Eventually it will dissolve. You crush that up like granulated sugar, it will dissolve. You might have to stir it, but it will dissolve much more quickly. All right, here's an example of something. Okay, we have magnesium and acid, which will make magnesium ions and hydrogen gas. Okay, so we throw some solid magnesium into the acid. And the only things that can react with the acid are the ones in the surf surface. If we cut the magnesium into little ribbons, then they're all over the place. So they can react with the acid, so the reaction is much, much quicker. Okay, another way to increase surface area is to dissolve the solids. Okay, if we dissolve a solid, then the particles are now individual throughout a solution and they're more accessible to other reactants. So that's why a lot of times you see not two solids being put next to each other, but you see two solutions that have dissolved solids in them and then mixing them because the particles that make them up are separated in the solution and they can react much quickly, much more quickly. Okay, the other alternative is we can grind the solid into powder, kind of like sugar, granulated sugar, or even something like, if you ever looked at powder sugar, um, it's almost like a dust. And believe it or not, that can be very problematic. For instance, when you have um, wheat or flour, a lot of times we hear about a silo near a train um, station in the Midwest blowing up because the small dust-like particles of that flour can get overheated and there's some air there or there's a spark from the train and it blows up. And you don't think flour is flammable, but it's flammable under these conditions because the particle size is so small it increases the reaction rate. Okay, and okay, there we go. This is an example of sugar that happening with sugar. I mentioned flour. This is a sugar refinery that blew up because the sugar um, with oxygen is explosive because it was granulated. Okay, I talked about catalyst. Catalyst um, is another way of increasing the reaction without increasing the temperature, and I'll show you why. Um, it's something that's not participatory in the reaction itself, so it's not used up and can be reused, which is a good thing because a lot of them are very expensive. Okay, and we can increase the rate of reaction. 
What it does, it changes the path of the reaction. It makes the path have a lower activation energy. So therefore, it does, takes less time to have sufficient energy to overcome that hump. So here's a picture. Okay, The purple line on top here is the normal reaction. And this is one with the catalyst. What we see is it's reactants and products are in the same place, but the amount of activation we need, activation energy we need is much, much less. And so therefore it speeds up the reaction. Okay, when salt water is added to the metal alloy in an MRE, the rate of the rusting reaction increases and heat is produced rapidly. Which factor that can affect reaction rates is being applied in this situation? Okay, you're going to put this question on Edge Cannon. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, salt acts as a catalyst for the reaction between the metal and water, speeding up the reaction without being consumed. So catalyst um, allow things that normally do not react at room temperature to be able to react at room temperature. So in this case, for hydrogen and oxygen, we are able to use platinum as a catalyst, and the reaction starts occurring. Okay, as I said before, the catalyst is not consumed and it's not a reactant, we usually just put it, if we have a catalyst and we know what it is, we put it over the arrow. Now, in your body, you have some natural catalyst because otherwise these would not occur in your body. We usually call these catalysts enzymes. For instance, enzymes are used to di digest protein molecules in a few hours rather than a few days. Now the opposite of a catalyst is called an inhibitor. It slows down the reaction. Okay, It inter interferes with the action of a catalyst. So usually what, a lot of times what happens is as we have a reaction going, we may want to then inhibit it or slow it down after a certain period of time. And some of these may poison the catalyst itself, meaning it, making it unusable. So it reduces the amount of catalysts available for the reaction. Okay, A lot of times we worry about this in some cars. You heard of a catalytic converter? Well, we couldn't put in um, leaded gas anymore because that could inhibit and destroy the catalyst in our catalytic converters. OK, which of the following factors could be increased in order to decrease a reaction rate? Let's check it out on Edge Cannon, and I'll be back with the correct answer. Good, particle size, because if its particle size is larger, it will take longer for the reaction to occur. It's when you make it smaller, when you grind it up, that it speeds up the reaction. All right, so that's basically it for this section. See you in class.